campaigning today in the Montreal riding of La Salle, Emile, Verdun, or Verdun, as people there call it. Advanced polls have opened already in, their, in that riding and in Winnipeg, the riding of Elmwood, Transcona. There are Liberal and NDP seats, respectively. But will they stay that way once all the votes are tallied on September 16th? Let's bring in the front bench. Sabrina Grover was a federal Liberal candidate in the 2021 election. She's a senior advisor at Spark Advocacy and North Star Public Affairs. Melanie Paredzi is the former communications director to Erin O'Toole. She's now the president of Texture Communications. Former Ontario NDP MPP Gurditan Singh, he's now vice president at Crestview Strategies. He's also the brother of federal NDP leader Jugmeet Singh. Welcome back to our fun Friday panel, friends. Uh, let's start in Montreal, though, where the NDP leader was today. Sabrina, this used to be Paul Martin's writing, also belonged to former Justice Minister David Lametti. So how important is this particular riding to the Liberals? I think every by-election riding is important, but I think this one is particularly important, uh, especially following Toronto St. Paul. Um, and I think it represents, uh, you know, the Liberal, that the Liberals continue to be uh, hopefully strong in Quebec, which is what they need leading into um, this session and, and potentially an election, you know, in the, sometime in the next 12 to 18 months. Um, and so I think it is important for the Liberals to focus on it. And they really have been. Like, they've been showing up every day. I've seen that candidate working incredibly hard in that by-election seat. And I think that uh, it's, it's very likely that the Liberals will hold that seat. Gurditan, we know the NDP is making a big play with a local city councillor as their candidate. How is the party feeling about this one just a couple of weeks or less than two weeks before that vote? I have to say that it's a very energetic feeling right now on the ground. Whenever I talk to folks who are involved in the campaign, uh, all I hear is uh, folks saying that they have record number of uh, volunteers coming out, that there's a lot of excitement. And of course, when you have a an, an already elected official running uh, for a different uh, level of government, you know, that comes with a lot of cachet and a lot of excitement as well. So I think we could see some really exciting developments there for the NDP in a, in a seat which is really a liberal stronghold. This is very much, I kind of think of it as the St. Paul's of Montreal. This is a, a strong liberal uh, seat, and uh, it's really up for the liberals to hold on to it. But we're seeing a lot of excitement and energy from the NDP, and, and uh, there could be an upset. Now, Melanie, we know that the Conservatives typically in this riding don't do very well. But how much of a barometer is this by-election for Pierre Polyev's popularity, specifically in Quebec? Do you think that they're watching the amount of votes that come out, or at least the percentage that come out for the Conservatives, just to get an idea of his popularity, especially on the island of Montreal? I'm sure that they will be watching the, those numbers for, for that information. But I think that the most important result will be how, how Jagmeet Singh performs, how the NDP do in this particular riding. Um, this is a riding that I, I think the Liberals are going to lose. The question is just whether it will go to the NDP or, or the bloc afterwards. Um, I, the, the NDP, I believe, have been hearing at the doors in both this riding and in Elmwood, Transcona, um, that there's really no water between Jagmeet Singh and Justin Trudeau. And why would you vote for the NDP if they're just going to prop up the Liberal government? Um, for another couple of months or for another year. Um, why wouldn't you just vote for, for a, diff a different candidate entirely um, so that you can be well represented in, in Parliament? I think that the NDP are finally hearing that, and that's actually what has triggered them pulling out of the confidence and supply agreement. I think these two by-elections are completely tied to the decision uh, that the NDP made to withdraw from that agreement. Sabrina, do you think... That, that sort of, I, I don't want to call it the conscious uncoupling because it seems too nice because uh, as we heard, Jagmeet Singh ripped up the agreement. I think he said it 25 times yesterday. But do you think that that in any way benefits the Liberals going into this? Yeah, I mean, I think it'd be interesting to know, like, what are the NDP selling at the doors, right? So I think when you talk about the confidence and supply agreement and the policy wins that have come out of it, dental care, pharma care, um, child care, the anti-scab legislation, the Liberals have managed to own all of those policies and successfully campaign on them, successfully build a narrative on them. And so what is the NDP bringing to the table? Um, and, so, and, you know, at the end of the day, even when I watch that video um, or anything that, that came out of the last two days with, uh, with, with Mr. Singh, you know, he's focused on this, like, strange narrative about corporate greed 
and, uh, you know, that the liberals are weak and small minded. That's not a selling message at the doors. Like, I don't know why voters would vote for that. And so I don't really know what they're bringing to the table that's different. But on the other hand, I think for the Liberals, this move is positive. It helps them uh, potentially come back to the center a little bit where their voters are uh, and where in a lot of seats they're competing with the Conservatives. That'll be really valuable and useful for policy going forward. Um, And I think it allows them to kind of come in refreshed. So I think it's a positive move for the Liberals. And I I just I'm not sure what the NDP is bringing to the table. Gerritan, I wanted to move to Elmwood Elmwood Transcona, and this has really been a bit of a family affair when you consider that Bill and Daniel Blakey have both held this riding for a long time. So do you think it's as symbolic to the NDP as La Salle et Mal of Verdun is to the Liberals? I think there's some pretty clear distinction between the two seats. Of course, this is a, a, a seat that has a rich NDP history and connection. But we know that there has been a varied history when you look at back at the electoral history to that specific riding. And you should never take any uh, election for granted. This is uh, an election that the NDP is in a great position and are fighting incredibly hard. But, uh, of course, at the end of the day, it's up to the voter. The distinction is that when we see a seat similar to St. Paul's in a Montreal context, we're talking about a long-standing liberal seat. And a change there would really reflect what we're seeing across this country, a pretty big rejection of Justin Trudeau, of his policies. And we see that in the favorability. We see that in in, in what people hear day-to-day in community. And uh, I think it's far more symbolic with respect to the need for the Liberals to hold on to the seat in LaSalle than it is. Uh, with respect, I don't think there's a comparison between that seat and the, uh, the Elmid, El- Elmid Transcona seat. Melanie, what do you think about that? Because this has been an NDP stronghold. The Conservatives have (laughs) been very competitive there. Uh, And, you know, is it as much of a stronghold when you consider, uh, you know, the reflection maybe on Jagmeet Singh and his leadership? Because this is one of those so-called blue-orange ridings that could flip back and forth because the Conservatives have been competitive there in the past. Yes, I've been pretty sure that this riding has been NDP for about 20 years with with the exception of, uh, of, a, of a few years when it was conservative. I, yeah. I think that this has been in the Blakey family for, for a considerable amount of time. So um, it's a bit disingenuous to suggest that this, that this isn't an NDP stronghold. It absolutely isn't. But the challenge for the NDP is they're, they are seeing the conservatives performing really well in this riding. Um, and I think that there's a very good chance. In fact, my money is on the conservatives winning this riding. It's going to be tight, but I think that the, they'll eke out a win. Uh, and that, in part, is because Pierre Polyev has been doing tremendous work, working with uh, with labor groups, working with uh, people who who like who uh, are, are working like blue collar jobs. Um, there's been a real concerted effort by the conservatives to appeal to that segment of the population, and and this riding is is quite um, is quite blue collar. Yeah, and Sabrina, with the exception of 2015, the Liberals have really placed a very distant third in that riding. They were third in that riding in 2015, but not as distant. Are the Liberals watching to see how close of a race this is between the NDP and Conservatives to get an idea of the popularity of both of those parties right now? Um, Well, I think it's interesting because there are a lot of places where there's the potential for a blue-orange switch, whether it's uh, Elma Transcona or we're talking about, you know, some places in southern Ontario. So I do think it's important for the Liberals to be watching that. Um, You know, I think it's interesting to to hear Mel talk about uh, Pierre really... uh, you know, getting into the labor markets and labor movements, you know, it it feels a little bit still like cosplay. Like, I'm not sure that he actually um, has embraced any of those policies or moved any of that forward. And so I think that there is room for the liberals to come into that space um, to continue pushing uh, for their own role in supporting labor and supporting, um, you know, workers, uh, whether it's through some of the policies that they've already delivered on or something that might come through in the session. Um, But yeah, I think it will be an important one for them to watch. Okay, we're going to leave that subject right there for right now. Give our front bench just a bit of a break. They'll be back in a couple of moments.